President Rodrigo Duterte on Tuesday signs into law the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion, or TRAIN law. The TRAIN law is expected to generate 130 billion pesos in revenues. Revenues from the tax reform measure are meant to fund the Duterte government's Build, Build, Build infrastructure program and socio-economic programs. Under the TRAIN law, income taxpayers with an annual salary of 250,000 pesos or those earning approximately 22,000 pesos monthly and below are exempt from income tax payment. To make up for the loss of revenue due to reduced income tax, the law imposes higher taxes on cars, fuel, tobacco, cosmetic surgery, and some sweetened beverages. To compensate for the loss of revenue, Congress increases taxes on fuel such as gasoline, diesel, and liquefied petroleum gas. This means higher prices for these commodities. The law also applies a four-tier tax scheme for automobiles, 4% for up to 600,000 pesos, 10% for over 600,000 pesos to 1 million pesos, 20% for over 1 million pesos up to 4 million pesos, 50% for over 4 million pesos. All pickup trucks and electric vehicles would be exempt from additional taxes. Hybrid cars would be imposed half the taxes as non-hybrid vehicles. The law also imposes a tax of 6 pesos per liter for drinks using sugar and artificial sweeteners and 12 pesos per liter for using high fructose corn syrup. Milk and instant coffee, drinks consumed by a majority of Filipinos are exempt. Coal will be taxed 50 pesos for 2018, 100 pesos for 2019, and 150 pesos for 2020. A media watchdog report says the Philippines is the deadliest country for journalists in Asia in 2017. Reporters Without Borders, in its annual report, says President Rodrigo Duterte's cryptic but alarming comment against journalists in May 2016 proved to be more than just talk in 2017. RSF says four Filipino journalists were killed for their work this year. The media watchdog attributes the situation to insults and open threats against the media by Duterte. The Philippines is also included in the top five dangerous countries for journalists, together with Mexico, Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. The report calls Syria as the world's deadliest. President Rodrigo Duterte wants the government to ensure that China Telecom can begin its Philippine operations by the first quarter of 2018. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque says Duterte has instructed the Communications Technology Department and the National Telecommunications Commission to approve all licenses and applications within seven days only upon complete submission of requirements. China has chosen China Telecom to help set up the third telecom provider in the Philippines, consistent with Duterte's intent to break the current duopoly in the industry. Roque also says Duterte warned the judiciary against any delays in the process of setting up the third telco provider. Duterte says, quote, I do not want the courts to interfere and prolong this process. Do not issue any TROs or injunctions. This is a matter of national interest for the benefit of the public. Armed Forces Chief Ray Guerrero relieves Vice Admiral Ronald Mercado as Philippine Navy Chief three months ahead of his retirement in March 2018. AFP spokesperson Edgardo Arevalo says Guerrero implemented the changes following instructions from higher authorities. Mercado is assigned to the office of the AFP Chief, while Rear Admiral Robert M. Pedrad is designated as Acting Navy Chief. Arevalo says the reason for the change in command will be explained in due time. This comes after Mercado tried to stand up to the Defense Department over the implementation of the Navy's 16 billion peso acquisition of two modern warships or frigates. The frigates acquisition project is one of the two big-ticket modernization projects of the military funded under the previous Aquino administration. The DND conducts the bidding process for the Navy, which is the end user. Mercado reportedly wanted to make sure the Navy's specifications were followed. South Korea's Hyundai Heavy Industries won the bid to build the two warships, but the contention was over the combat management system that will be installed in the ships. The Philippine government withdraws its application for the second cycle of grants from the United States aid-giving body Millennium Challenge Corporation. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says the government wants to prioritize the funding of the Marawi City of Rehabilitation. Roque says, quote, We are confident that the U.S. government fully understands the decision to reallocate our funding priority for this year and that this will not in any way adversely impact our eligibility for another round of compact assistance in the future because it calls for counterpart financing as well. He adds the withdrawal does not mean the Philippines will never accept grants from the MCC. Roque also denies that the Philippines' withdrawal has anything to do with criticisms by U.S. officials on President Rodrigo Duterte's controversial war on drugs.